Do you know who is true James Bond? Well, I'll go and discover today together with you. So stay with me to the end of the episode. But before we start digging deep into this topic, I'd like to share something with you. When I was on Intelligence Academy and I was learning the craft of espionage, and this book was written in good old days of communism called the Modern Espionage. It was being published in 1980. And uh, in this book, there's the names we're talking today and sharing with you. And those names has been highlighted as a great examples of wall in espionage. And true James Bond it is. Let's go discover. Do you know who inspired Ian Fleming to create that character of James Bond? According to some stories, Fleming based Bond on his own life. However, Ian Fleming was working in British intelligence agency during the Second World War, but he never been in a front line as a frontline intelligence officer. Instead of this, he was being based in Britain or in the countries like Switzerland, Portugal, and Sweden. Why is that? Because those countries were deemed as a neutral countries. And what's happening in neutral countries? It happens. Sex, rock and roll. No, not rock and roll. Sex, music, drugs, conversations, good food, far away from the front line. The perfect ball of espionage. And don't forget one thing. Ask yourself, what counterintelligence does in those countries? Who is watching the watches? Basically, who is watching their own spies? The legend of Ian Fleming, we know that he created the James Bond, but it's likely that began in Hotel Palacio in Lisbon, as I say. Lisbon, the capital city of Portugal. It was the city of espionage. And as long as you didn't touch into internal affairs, Portuguese government didn't give a care about nothing. A British Secret Service agent was assigned to track a gentleman called Dusan Popol, observed the Serb spend $80,000 to compel his opponent to resign. That agent was Ian Fleming, and his first novel was about 007, Casino Royale, featured on identical sequence. The real agent Popol, like his fictional counterpart, enjoyed drinking, luxury, cars, and most importantly, what else? Women. He was formerly in relationship with Simone Simone, a famous French actress and beauty of the day. Popo, Dusan Popo, was a Bond's inspiration. Who else? A Serbian spy. Now, let's go dig into this world of elite espionage. The world of elite espionage intrigue and the real secret agents, where little is known for the certain. One name is certainly frequently discussed and regarded as a role model, Dusan Popo. And as I say, Dusan Popo, even being Serbian background, He's been in the book of the modern espionage. And this is what's been written in communist Yugoslavia. And I need to learn from this book quite often. So who was Dusan Popov? He was the Second World War most effective spy. A double agent, you hear me well, trusted by Churchill and Hitler. Hitler trusted quite a lot of the foreign spies, not his own German spies, but foreign spies. That cost him dearly. He was born 1912 in Titel to a rich family. He grew up in Belgrade Center, but his fellow family relocated to Dubrovnik in 1930s. He went to the best schools in England, France and Germany, and he studied law in Freiburg in 1936. As you can see, Dusan Popo was quite across the Europe. There he met Joan, Johnny Jebsen, who will not only become his best friend, but would also transform his life forever. Now, needless to say that Dushan, because he traveled a lot, he spoke Italian, German, French, and English. He detested the Nazis and was horrified by their ascent to power, and of course, subsequent prejudice against the Jews. Nonetheless, in Early 1940, 
when the Second World War was already well underway, but then Yugoslavia remained neutral, it was Jebsen who urged him to join German intelligence service called Abwehr. So somebody else told him, join German intelligence Abwehr. However, Dushan's friend's proposal was even more audacious. He recommended that they become the double agent who will work for the Germans while gathering intelligence for the Allies. Now, the story, that's an official biography, but in real world, it doesn't work that way. Obviously, this his friend Jepsen, he worked on Dushan for some time. He has been identified as a target profile and, um, you know, list goes on. That's, that's a happening in the world when you try to recruit informants, not the spies. Don't forget one thing. The spies are operatives who work for the government and they are somebody who organizing informants. So Dushan was deemed as a spy and Ian Fleming, of course, um, inspiration, but he was a basically informant, work by Jepsen. And Jepsen told him not to become the spy for the Germans, but he should work as a double agent. And thus was born the secret spy, Popol. Ivan for the Germans, tricycle for the British, and a Dushko for the Serbian. According to one story, he was dubbed tricycle because he preferred what uh, threesome sex. While according to another, he become the lead agent of the trio consists of balloon and gelatin. Correct. Balloon and gelatin. Dushan Popol life was dangerous since he traveled from Lisbon to London. Lisbon it was a center of European espionage at the time, as I say. And London, where he routinely gave reports to British on German planes and received the false information that he was intended to pass on the Reich. Now you ask yourself how he traveled in Britain during the war. Well, that's a mysterious way of espionage. Popo came into possession of incredible piece of information. Somewhere in that communication on the eve of 1941, the Japanese were keenly interested in possibility of bombers taking off from aircraft carrier. And he was tasked by the Abwehr to go, where else, to the United States and gather information about Pearl Harbor. You see how the war goes? Japanese are interested. Germans task him and send him into the United States. Popo put two and two together and went to the FBI headquarters soon after landing in America and informed them that Japanese would attack Pearl Harbor. His cautions, however, they, <laughs> what else, they dismissed it. As you know, uh, at that stage, you know, obviously the FBI was like, you know, who's going to attack us, you know, Japanese. And uh, at that stage in 1940, 1941, uh, the world has a different perception about Japanese as a nation. Popo had a frosty reception at the FBI and Hoover didn't trust his claim. Popo, who had supplied this storm warning of a serious Japanese interest in attack Pearl Harbor, was kept cooling his heels in New York City for two weeks. When Hoover, I mean, El Presidente of FBI or the Director General of FBI or in charge of FBI, finally came from Washington to see him, he insulted Popo as a sex-crazed scoundrel and threatened to have him arrested for violation of the MAN Act. MAN Act. However, who were most likely repented a few months later on December 7, 1941. During the war, Portugal managed to remain neutral and the luxurious holiday location Estoril, not far from Lisbon, was ideal for these gentlemen accustomed to extravaganza and grandua. Popo would meet with German agents and obtain vital information about Third Reich plans for them. So, let me just elaborate to you how these things work. As you know, once when the relationship between the handler and the informant has been established, they become familiar with each other. And let's go, don't go so crazy. 78 years ago, 
the behavior of the handler, I mean the spies or the operational agents from the Third Reich or USA or England, behave differently. And now try to imagine Portugal surrounded with all these problems, but there's no war. It's a good food, women drink, music, and you can relax. What they do? People talk. People love to talk. So the Popo handler or from the German Abwe intelligence agency, obviously he loves to talk. Why they need information? You know, a couple of drinks, they will tell the Popo, obviously, look, we need a this and this and this, and because we're gonna do this and this and this and this. That way the checking on Popo is legit. And as well, they're doing because it's a social occasion. And as you can see, the populists travel during the war to Britain, to US, and think how this was possible for him and always landed in a country where nobody asked him, where have you been? That is Portugal, neutral country. And Lisbon was a capital city of espionage in the Second World War. Then what he will do, he will return to London and share this information with the British MI6. Who else? Simultaneously, he will receive instruction from the Brits on what information, genuine or fake, he was to send to the Germans, along with the answers prepared in advance for any trick question they could ask. And those stage, we didn't have a chat GPT to help us. It was all human behavior psychologists, psychiatrists, you know, people who work in the background. During his time in Lisbon, Popo was under the cautious eye of his MI6 comrade, the same one who would go to immortalize his exploits. Who else? Ian Fleming, who was a secret spy at the time, and he was directly in charge of monitoring the triple agent. Now it's not double, it's a triple agent. Both the Germans and British sides told Dushan that he was embarking on this journey at his own risk. Now you understand, he is informant, which meant that if he was detected, he couldn't rely on either German or British assistance. Well, you're good to us, provide this information, but if you've been captured, unfortunately, we can't help you. That's a reality of the world of human intelligence. This didn't appear to bother the triple agent in the list. Furthermore, he was so confident in himself that he concluded that his bohemian hobbies did not need to suffer as a result of his spying activities. That's how Dushan, he carried himself. Despite the hazard, he spared no money, relished the company of attractive females, and was frequently observed frequenting elite casinos in and around Lisbon. In fact, he, he will realize that they were in the company of a covert operative. They will. They did. They have believed he was a spy because what else? Eh? Guy has the money. He doesn't belong here. He's a foreigner. And all these covert stories. And, you know, obviously they realized he was a covert operative. They were supposed to be modest and measured. Never attracting undue attention to themselves. Dushan Popov, in the other hand, was far from it. So he has been told, do not track attention. What he does, he does opposite direction. He was attracting attention. Nonetheless, most of his extravaganza was due to his position as an intelligence agent in those times, which was a very lucrative occasion at the time. It was, but in the end, this was unsurprising. In addition to constant risk, the information gained by Popo considerably contributed to the success of the Allies and foiling the enemy plans with the ultimate goals of victory. By the conclusion of the war, Popo had extracted, now listen this, nearly $2 million in today's money from the Germans for the acquirement of the secret network of Nazis in Britain, which then handed on the Allies. In addition, his role in D-Day was critical. He was successful in diverting Nazi attention away from Normandy and toward inflated tanks and phony military men carefully 
stationed along the coast. Fortitude was the name given to this activity. And Popo, well, Popo had a previously established a network of so-called fictive spies in Abwehr. He was a very creative man. So what was their mission? Their mission was to transmit false information to the German leadership regarding the French invasion intentions. And as you know, the Hitler didn't believe that Normandy was a real place where the Allies landed. He was waiting them in Calais. And that was costly for the Germans. One of the numerous successful operations, known as a fortitude, was entrusted with a falling Hitler's command. Now, Popo warned the Germans that Allied soldiers was disembarked in French north past the Calais to liberate Europe, as I mentioned before. And that was not true. Imagine one man, he was convincing entire German military, including Hitler. This is the place where the Allies gonna attack. Of course, the plan was radically different. The Allies had a long intended to disembark in Normandy. In the end, as we know, the Battle of Normandy dictated the outcome of World War II. Popo and British MI6 were able to deceive the enemy, saving many, all truly many, if not millions, of lives. Popov won numerous awards for his achievement after the war. Both, you're gonna love this one, from the British and the Germans. Though he didn't continue in espionage, he did live a lavish lifestyle until his death in 1981. That being said, the American FBI took over all information about Dushin operations after the war. It wasn't until the early 21st century that one of his sons, sons was able to obtain his father file from the MI6 service. And guess how many pages? Impressive, 2,870 pages. When he memorized the adventure of Agent 007 in his novels, Ian Fleming, Dushan Fulmer's comrade, had highly solid sources. Furthermore, 36 books have been produced about the mythology of all of espionage and Dushan's name was also included on the one of the 10 best British agents of all time. One of the 10 best British agents of all time. That was a Dushan Popo who inspired Ian Fleming to write 007 books and a casino royale. World of Espionage, ladies and gentlemen, is a tricky. It's a full of betrayals. It's a full of mysteries and intrigues, full of obstacles. What you see in the movies, it doesn't depict reality. Dushan Popo, he was ahead of his time and he was thinking very clearly and he was very creative. Thank you for watching Live the Battlefield. Feel free to subscribe, share, like, and leave the comments in the comment section below. Let's go learn all of us. Ian Fleming, 007, Dushan Popo, and what is for you the world of espionage. Thank you for watching.